Hello there everyone, um, welcome to the show and tell number three. We're going to be kicking off in 15 minutes, so stay tuned, go grab a snack and uh, invite a friend or two. Um, super excited to be with you here today um, and I'll talk to you more in just a little bit.
Hello again, uh, this is Jason and we're going to be starting in about 10 minutes. I see lots of new faces in the chat right now and if you haven't introduced yourself, go chat in the YouTube live chat to we're a very friendly community here. Say hello, let me know where you're from and your experience with machine learning, all that kind of fun stuff. I'd love to talk to you over there whilst we're waiting. So uh, if you've got any questions, um, feel free to write those over there in the live chat. Thank you very much. I see you've got users from all around the world. Hello to Nepal. Where is everyone else from? Hello, Hie, welcome to the chat. I saw someone asking if you're gonna get a PDF at the end of the show. We're not producing PDFs, but we will be sending out links to all the live demos that you can try out in your own time. So um, you'll get details of that at the end of the show. Welcome, Ahmed. Thank you for joining. And yes, it doesn't matter if you are a machine learning expert or you're completely new to machine learning. This show Intel is for everybody, and I guarantee everyone will get something from it. So. Do stay tuned and um, I'm super excited to show you the demos today. We've got some great presenters lined up for you and hopefully inspiring as well to take your first steps with TensorFlow.js after the show as well. Ah oh, yes, you see the brain artwork on the wall here. Um, this is the only art piece I've ever bought, but I was super inspired by that. Um, it's actually one of the most detailed um, micro etchings of the human brain in the world. And I find that pretty inspiring, obviously working in the field of machine learning and also knowing about the human brain. It's good to kind of uh, see how the two worlds sometimes merge. Um, and yeah, I, I like that. So I bought it and it's now part of my live streaming experience, which is always good. <laughs> and if anyone's uh, super keen eyed, you can also see there's a message down in the bottom right here on my little backpack in the corner of the room. Can anyone decipher what it says? We've just broken 100 viewers, that's great. Please do invite your friends. Let's see if we can get an all-time high score. This is the third show and tell. This is the first time we're actually on the TensorFlow channel. And it'd be great to beat our high score. I think it was 125 or something like this on our previous one, which was on my personal channel in the past. So let's see if we can break that. Invite your friends. <laughs> Welcome everyone. I see people from Iraq, India, Nigeria. Welcome to all the people who've just joined. 
Yes, I've got lots of animations in the room. I love my RGBs. <laughs> We've got my backpack, my keyboard is going, and all the good stuff. I'm seeing some made of TFJS love there in the chat as well. Thank you for using the hashtag. If anyone's made any cool stuff with TensorFlow.js, feel free to use the made with TFJS hashtag on Twitter or LinkedIn, and you can find and discover lots of cool work that the community have been making. It's a great way to get inspired. And of course, if you take any screenshots from today's show, feel free to use the hashtag to share the love for the live stream as well. I'm sure others want to see what's going on and see the recording afterwards too. Hey, Lostis, thanks for joining. Lostis is one of our presenters today, actually. So um, some of the presenters will be in a live chat at some point today. So do feel free to ask them questions in the live chat later after we go live and you start seeing all the wonderful demos our presenters will be in the live chat too. So do say hello to them and ask any questions you may have. Oh, we're at 123 live viewers. We're almost beating our old record of 125. Come on, we can do this. Invite some friends. <laughs> we're gonna get there. We're gonna do it, I think. Come on. <clears throat> We've got another three or four minutes to go before we kick off. So hold in there, grab a snack and we'll be kicking off in just a few minutes. And yes, RGB trains your models two times faster. You difficult to have the RGB for speed. <laughs> Hello, Brazil, welcome. And Colombia as well. Wow, really international audience today, excellent. Hey, Chivé, another one of our presenters in the live chat there. Say hello to Chivé. Okay, we've broken 125, we're at 137. So this is an official new record for the TensorFlow.js team. Um, congrats. <laughs> Let's see how high we can go though. Maybe we'll reach 200 by the time we kick off, who knows, but um, we broke the record, that's the main thing. <laughs> Hello to all the new folk who joined. We'll be kicking off in just two minutes. It's currently 9.58 on my side, so another two minutes and then we'll get the show started. Welcome to Malaysia. Great to see so many people coming from different parts of the world today. Really awesome. 139, going higher on the, on the live viewers there. I think we, we touched 140 something, so that's pretty cool. And yes, Hugo is going to be presenting today. And hello, Gant. Welcome to the live chat. Gant is another one of our presenters. So say hi to Gant in the chat there. And we'll be kicking off in just one minute. Uh, when that happens, I will disappear for just a second as we transition to a different scene, and then I'll be back very shortly afterwards. So do not disconnect. <laughs> I'm just, I'll be back momentarily after that. Hey, Pranav, thanks for joining. Okay, we're gonna get this kicked off in just a second. I've just seen Lawrence join the chat as well. Lawrence Moroni, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining today. I know everyone knows who he is already. So we've got superstars in our live chat as well. So thanks for joining Lawrence. 
And hi to Nali as well. Nali is on my team at TensorFlow.js, so please do say hi to her, and she can answer any technical questions you might have about TensorFlow.js too. Now we're going to get kick kick started in um, in 30 seconds time. I'm going to disappear for 30 seconds, but then I shall reappear shortly afterwards. So see you in 30. Okay, so welcome everyone to the TensorFlow.js show and tell number three. I know a lot of you have been looking forward to this for quite some time, and we're finally back with even more amazing demos for your viewing pleasure. Now, for those of you new to the show, I'm Jason Mays, Developer Advocate for TensorFlow.js here at Google, and I'm super excited to welcome you to our new home here on the TensorFlow YouTube channel for the first time ever. Now, I'm aware today our audience may come from many different backgrounds. Some might be new to TensorFlow.js, some might even be new to machine learning, and that's completely fine. So a quick recap on what we're about to see. Essentially, TensorFlow.js is an open source machine learning library, just like the original Python version that some of you may already be using, but in JavaScript. And what this means is that in a single click, you can perform machine learning in the web browser and beyond to millions of people. We can run in many environments, including server-side via Node.js, React Native for mobile apps, Electron for desktop native apps, and even Raspberry Pi for Internet of Things via Node. Now, if you're running in a web browser, you don't even need to set up any complex environment for others to try out your model. You can run on device, even offline, with lower latency, as there's no server-side calls after the page load if you're using JavaScript in the browser which is also great for privacy too when classifying sensor data on the client side. Now, many of the models you know and love are being ported to run in this way to get even more eyes and minds exploring cutting edge research for the real world use cases out there. And on this note, today we have eight amazing demos built by folk in the TensorFlow.js community from all around the world. Our presenters today come from many different regions, Americas, Europe, Asia, and I'm super excited for you to meet them all. Our guests today are live with us in the YouTube chat, so do feel free to ask questions as you watch the show, and they'll answer those questions over there too. Links to the demos and further reading will be in the description of the YouTube video, so do check that out after the show to learn more and try things out yourself. Now, for those of you who want to continue to nerd out after the show, we're going to have a hangout at the end, which has been tradition for our previous show intels, and this is not broadcast live or recorded, but you can join that. Now, in the smaller group, you can meet fellow community members or ask any questions you may have, or maybe you've got a project idea you're looking for someone to hack with. Come join us afterwards to discuss. Okay, so with that, let's get the show started and meet our first presenter. So next up, we've got Gant all the way from the USA, who I'm sure many of you have heard of before. He's been a popular guest on our show and tells in the past. And he's very active within TensorFlow.js as one of our GDEs, Google Developer Experts. So thank you, Gant, for joining us here today. And um, I hear you've made a pretty cool project around presenting, in fact. So maybe you can tell us more about this and how it works. Yeah. Um, so I have this pretty, it, I love presenting. I've actually traveled all around the world, chatting with the different people. And I have to say that now that everything's virtual, I am going to twice as many conferences and I'm seeing infinitely fewer people. <laughs> I miss my hallway tracks, my, my, you know, when I'm just talking, like it's great because I'm chatting with you, but if I'm doing a presentation, um, I'm, I'm used to seeing people in the audience nod their heads and smile and chat and ask questions. And I think that's like a critical part that, that I've been missing. That's sort of uh, part of the inspiration. Also, I, I have this other thing where I went to Universal Studios 10 years ago, and they used to show me these, these movie trailers when you go there, uh, and then you would squeeze this bar with your right hand if you liked what was happening in the trailer. 
and then you would squeeze this bar with your left hand if you disliked it. And I thought this was so cool because it was like they were able to gather all this data and then understand what people thought about it. And they could overlay it, average it, just the amazing information you could get from something like that. I was like, oh, this is cool. I always wanted to have something like that. You know, even when I'm presenting in person, like, did that did that joke actually land? <laughs> and then right, you just watch yeah, the I know green that bar. <laughs> that moment of silence until you wait for a reaction to appear. Somewhere. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so so I was like, oh, you know, I really wish we could have something like that. We're even more distant than ever now. And I was like, ah, you know what? With AI, I think we can create it. Awesome. Great stuff. Now, I know this is a real issue for presenters. I also give a lot of presentations for TensorFlow.js. And um, especially now in the current times, it's very hard to see who's on the other side. So can we try this out somehow? Can, let, let, let's yes. get a demo going. Yeah, let's do this. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And then you're going to be my audience. Uh, okay, which is sounds a, good to me. So if you, if you hate me, I will know. I will know exactly. <laughs> I'll try my best <laughs> to give my best smiles. <laughs> All right. So the cool thing about this is because it's TensorFlow.js, it's easy enough for me to go ahead and just turn this into a website that everybody can use. So I created a website called EnjoyingThe.Show. And uh, this is a pretty cool aspect. So yes, uh, please put up with my theatrics just a little bit here. <laughs> um, but the idea is very simple. You can either watch a room or you can join a room as, as an audience member. OK, so let's go ahead and check this out real quick. And what I'm going to do is let's create a room. We're going to create a room called TF. And that'll be for TensorFlow. So we're going to go into this room. And you can see right now we're watching the TF room and nobody's in there. Um, so sure enough. And so I can take this link down here, enjoying the dot show room slash TF. Now, Jason. Can you join this room real quick? Just go ahead sure, and go to that good. URL. If you just ping me the link and I shall join right now. Yeah, here we go. Just, uh, there it is, going your way. OK, let me open on my side. And cool, I'm in the room, I believe. Now, we can see that you're in there. Now, at the model's loading. And then it's also going to ask for access to your camera. And now it should go ahead and start seeing your face soon. And then when it starts to see your face, they'll start doing a sentiment analysis. And then you should see um, whether you're happy or sad. It'll actually say it directly on your side. Uh huh. OK, one second. Cool. So I, I'm in the room, and I can see myself here on the screen live. Um, I can see the bounding box around my head. So clearly, it's recognized me. That's really cool. And what are you seeing on your side, Gant? Yeah, so as of right now, we could see that you are happy. Can you give me a, let's give me a different facial expression real quick. OK, let's do a surprise. OK. Yes, oh, yeah, there absolutely, we go. Hey. immediately. There we go. Very nice. I'm trying okay. to do my sad I, face. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's going to work, though. <laughs> I can see it. you're trying. <laughs> it's all, it's all over the face. <laughs> can, can you give me angry? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I can't, I'm, I'm just very bad at being angry, but surprise and happy. <laughs> I surprise. can do that. <laughs> That's awesome. And neutral, just no, no expression whatsoever. You're just listening to my talk and it's boring you. It's, <laughs> you're too happy. You're such a happy guy. This is great. I want you in all my audiences. <laughs> so maybe we can bring in a second person. Um, I, we've got Eric yes. on the call as well, who's producing this video for us. We would have joined the, uh, the fun here, Eric. Let's see how this goes. All right. So I see that there are two people that are in the room. And so now all I need. Ah, there we go. Both of y'all are showing happy. Very hey. cool. OK, I'm going to go all surprise. Right, now, New, oh, I got one sad, one surprised. Nicely done. Oh, <laughs> surprise went to happy. Jason, I know that's you. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that is me. I'm smiling again. <laughs> Nicely done, y'all. All right. Can I get both of y'all to be happy for one second? Let's hear. Two happy people. Perfect. And now two neutrals. Let's see, neutrals. See if we can pull that off. Good. And then let's see if we can get angry. Ah, I hate your presentation. <laughs> angry and disgusted. I love it. The coolest thing about this is like now if you're giving a virtual talk, you can give out a link and then as people are having different facial expressions, you can actually see it all happen. And I have a cute little video back on the main page, so I'll go back to that real quick. You can see when I was originally testing it out here, are some friends and I, uh, all of us sitting there on Zoom messing with the actual demo. <laughs> so, yeah, and this is all powered by the magic of 
TensorFlow.js. I'm not actually getting a picture of your face sent to me. I'm yeah, not and that, actually that's getting... especially important, I think, when you're attending presentations, you might be doing other things as well. So you yeah. want to kind of like, you know, respect their privacy, but still get that information about, you know, the happiness of the of the people and that kind of stuff, at least. <laughs> that's, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a facial sentiment analysis on the client directly in the browser using your webcam. And then what's getting sent to me is a string, uh, what room you're in and what your facial expressions are. And that's all getting brought back down in live time with a subscription to GraphQL to give me a real time update of how things are going. And this is the most exciting aspect of this whole thing, because I can't tell you, uh, I have way more computers than I have, you know, time to actually look at. Now I could use this for setting up security cameras throughout the house. Like you're not allowed in this room or what's going on over there. Um, or for identifying, uh, where my dogs are in the house. I can have all that information on different cameras sent, you know, universally and then get an update immediately, which is like a really fun aspect too. So, so a little bit more, I want to dig in on some of this stuff. So um, obviously you're using TensorFlow.js, super cool, running in a browser, super cool. But like what, what models are you using here to get this? Um, is it a combination of models, just one model or? or give this me one, I was, I was doing my own. And then I, uh, Vincent Mueller, who does uh, Just a Doodoo Hacks, is his Twitter handle. Can't beat his stuff. It's so good. Um, I was thinking about switching out a bunch of different models, but this one is the um, facial landmarks with a 128 point. Um, and uh, it's it's just really, really, really worked out well. And I was like, you know, if I'm trying to train my own, I'm, I'm going to end up with a bunch of bias. <laughs> so, <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to go with, I'm going to go with this. So it's really cool. This is community helping community because that's an open source platform. And then this is an open source website and platform for everybody. And then I'm excited to see what kind of things people could do and using this with their audience. So uh, I have to say thanks so much. That, and I have to say, you know, honestly, um, this being a GraphQL subscription through, we got a credit from um, from Amazon to go ahead and just make it real time. So you're not going to slam me in fees as you're getting hundreds and hundreds of people set up like that. That was a cool donation <laughs> by them as well. That's very useful as well, for sure, definitely. Um, Cool. So obviously people can try this out. It's live for people to use. So we can put up the link in the description uh, after the show and maybe even an overlay. <laughs> and um, where do you see this going in the future? Like what, what's your end goal here? And um, do you have anything in the pipeline right now? Uh, yeah, I, I like this as a great way. If you're going to do a talk about um, TensorFlow.js and you are in person, feel free to bust out this example as well. Uh, and, you know, I thought about maybe it would be really cool if you had your talk recorded and it actually recorded the setup of like when people were smiling, when nice. they were can scrub back over time and see the sentiment yeah. and uh, mood and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Exactly. You could tell if that joke did land or not. And you could, <laughs> you could go because honestly, when you're presenting, there's a chance that you are not actually able to pay attention to your audience. You're thinking about the next thing you say. I call it uh, next up syndrome. Right. I don't even hear the talk before mine or the talk after mine. I'm always focused, but uh, I think it'd be a great improvement tool as well for you to actually find out, you know, how it went, uh, being able to see people's reactions and, and sort of like gather that together as of course, with them saying, yes, I approve on my laptop. That's the beauty of it. It's privacy. It's kind of sitting there and you're not going to crash my server. It's all running on the <laughs> client machine. You might even find some hidden gems. I'm thinking as well, like unexpected happy moments, which you didn't realize everyone was like enjoying so much. And, <laughs> and when you scrub back over time, you can actually see those moments kind of like, you know, highlighted or something yeah. like this. That's kind of cool. Yeah. If it's a talk, you're going to give more than once. Um, you can definitely use this. And then if you had something that you just threw in there and did great, now you're going to throw it in there on purpose every time. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome demo. Um, if people want to make a project like this themselves, what advice would you give them to get started in this space? Well, I'd say first thing you want to do is come up with a really cool idea. I'd say follow follow Jason, everybody. He's <laughs> posting really awesome stuff on uh, TensorFlow.js all the time. There's really cool stuff out there. And then I'll throw some stuff out on ai-fyi.com. I do a little newsletter with fun and interesting things as well. I'd say that once you kind of get bitten by the 
TensorFlow.js bug. Um, there's a lot of tools out there. There's a lot of information out there for you to get it. Awesome. And I, I am a subscriber of that newsletter, and it is pretty cool. Yes. So lots of good machine learning laughs in there and some great <laughs> projects. So thanks for sharing those with the community. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. And with that, thank you very much, Gant, for attending today. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Gant, for that beautiful demo once again and super fun opening to the show. Having to do presentations myself, I'm certainly looking forward to trying it out in the future. Now, if you've got any questions for Gant, feel free to type in the live chat whilst he's here. He's right there in live chat. So um, it's now time for us to move on to our next presenter. Okay, so next up, we've got Hugo all the way from Brazil, who has created a wonderful write-up and demo on how to take some cutting edge research from Python and port it to TensorFlow.js for semantic image segmentation. Now, before we dive into the project, Hugo, I would love to hear a bit more about your background in machine learning in Python, and maybe what encouraged you to transfer that knowledge over to JavaScript so we can actually have this working in a cross-platform way. Tell us more. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having me. As you said, my name is Hugo Zanini. I'm Brazilian, I'm a computer vision software engineer, and I'm passionate about applying cutting edge machine learning models to solve real world problems. As you can imagine, in computer vision, this is a very challenging job because models are heavy and the data is intrinsically heavy. Most of the time, I'm ingesting data from video streaming and processing it in real time. So I'm always concerned about performance and how to speed up my models. In, in production. So most of the projects I've been doing so far are in Python, and to deliver high quality solutions on the client side, it's very common to use specialized hardware as GPUs or, or even TPUs. So I've been always looking for solutions that allow me to provide lighter models, but keep in high accuracy and low cost for my clients, you know? So this, TensorFlow.js fits like a glove for this kind of problem because machine learning models running the browser means that from a user perspective, there's no need to install, to install drivers or, or libraries. Just open a web page and, and the program is running. And, and for me, this is amazing. Awesome. That's, that's super cool to hear your perspective there. So let, let's get into your project. Uh, what have you actually made and, and why did you make that? As, as you mentioned in the beginning, I converted a semantic segmentation from Curious in the Python side to the TensorFlow.js layers format. I, I've been working with some context-related problems using semantic segmentation, and I started to investigate if, if it was possible to make my models lighter and put it in the client side on an easy way. So that's why I came up with this TensorFlow.js solution. And uh, just a brief explanation about semantic segmentation. Semantic segmentation is the process of detecting and delineating every object of interest appearing in an image. Um, currently, there are several approaches that solve this problem and produce results as shown in this image. As you can see, uh, one of the main applications of semantic segmentation is in autonomous vehicles where cars need to understand their environment. So semantic segmentation algorithms are able to put the car in the context, and assign a meaning to the scenes. So this kind of algorithm can identify the lane position if there is some obstruction as pedestrians crossing the roads or, or fallen trees, and of course, identify other cars on the, on the street. And I know that in TensorFlow.js, we've had uh, body pics for quite some time now, but I'm particularly excited about your project as you've gone beyond just the human body. And as you mentioned, you can do pedestrians, you can do cars, um, even birds and other animals and things like this. So that's super interesting to see. Uh, can we see a demo of it in action? That'd be really great. This is the project running in, in real time. I did a presentation with some different objects and as you said, animals in different contexts, just to show how the algorithm works. Uh, the model that I used here was um, the refined net, a mid-level model for the semantic segmentation problem reaching around 75% in the, the cityscapes, a data set focused on image segmentation for urban street scenes. Uh, as you can see, there is a small delay, mostly due to the image reconstruction time, 
but the model is pretty fast and can recognize a lot of different objects. As, as you said, until now, we have had only body peaks. So this project uh, brought us to a new level because now we can identify up to 20 different classes going from cars, uh, bicycles, and I don't know, birds, until person, cats, and dogs. So th that's, that's pretty interesting. And that, that's really cool to see because like, we can see this working even though you're holding your mobile phone to the screen here as well. And obviously... Um, there's various artifacts and having a very bright screen. So I guess it'd work even better with like uh, imagery that wasn't like uh, with a bright screen and that kind of stuff, right? Yes, of course. The light, it's not good. So there are a lot of, of problems in this kind of environment. But yeah. The, the yeah, water, but it still seems to be good. working very well. So I'm very impressed with that. So um, I guess I'm sure a lot of our viewers right now who are more familiar with the body pics model might be curious about how this compares in terms of uh, speed and efficiency, that kind of stuff, maybe even the model size. Um, do you have any details on those kinds of aspects of this model and, and how it compares to our existing ones? In terms of size and speed, the models are very similar. Okay. Body Peaks uh, using Mobile Net V1 backbone has a size of 13 megabytes. Uh -huh. And the, ref the converted refined net model using the Mobile Net V2 backbone has a size of 12.7 okay, megabytes. Okay, pretty compact. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, almost the same. Uh, in terms of speed, the models are very similar as well because body peaks uh, run around 30 frames per second in my machine, and the refined net model uses semantic segmentation as well. So I can say that in terms of size and speed, the models are very similar and, and perform almost at the same level. And of course, I have to ask on behalf of the audience today, uh, is there any way for people to try this out right now after the show? Uh, how can they find out more about it? So the code is available on GitHub. And I wrote an article explaining the main concept that I use in this project. How did I convert this model from Curious to JavaScript layers format? So to use the model, it's pretty simple. You just have to clone the repository, install the dependence, and, and run the code. It's very straightforward. And the codes to the GitHub repository and to the article are going to be available in, in the description. Perfect. <laughs> um, we've got users from all different backgrounds watching. Some might be new to TensorFlow.js, some might be new uh, to machine learning, um, and others might be experts in machine learning and new to JavaScript and vice versa. So many different backgrounds. And I, I personally would love to see um, more Python and JS devs working together like this to combine the reach and scale of the web, essentially, with the cutting edge research we're seeing in Python and other areas. And um, I'd love to see if you have any advice for people watching who might be from the Python background, like yourself, as to you know when and why converting to TensorFlow.js could be of use to them as researchers and that kind of stuff. I guess that most of the Python developers that I use are using cutting edge machine learning models, mostly in computer vision, are facing similar challenges as me. So train the models in Python and convert them to the TensorFlow.js layers format is a good way to put your models in production and make your life easier, you know? So the conversion from Python to TensorFlow.js is easy. TensorFlow.js provides a tool to do that. So you just need the models saved in the Curious format and the library will be in charge of the rest. To give an idea of how simple it is, this is the, the required command. To, to do the conversion. Yeah, so my, my advice for all Python developer is to give TensorFlow.js a try, you know? <laughs> you are going to notice how your job of putting your models in production is going to be easier. And I believe that TensorFlow.js is the future of machine learning because run the models in the browser without complex libraries or, or powerful computers, for me, that, that's what we need to make machine learning even more popular and accessible for, for everyone. So yes, I, I completely agree. I think it's very exciting to see these models being used uh, with people far beyond the initial scope of research only and all the creatives out there too um, can access this with a click of a button on a web page and so on and so forth. Um, so thank you very much, Hugo, for coming today. It's been great hearing about your project and I look forward to seeing what you create in the future. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Bye.
So that was some amazing work by Hugo there and potentially useful to some of the new folk joining us today from the TensorFlow Python community. I'd love to hear what other models you'd like to try out in the browser in this way. Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you're enjoying the show until right now, hit that like button so we know you're enjoying the show. Now, I think it'd be great, great to empower more people to use the great models from research that you're all making, no matter what environment the end user may choose to use it in. And of course, if you've got any questions for Hugo, do reach out to him in the live chat right now. He's there in the live chat to speak to you all, and we'll move on to the next demo. So next up, we've got Charlie all the way from Amsterdam, who's a fellow creative technologist, and many of you may know her as DevDevCharlie over on Twitter. Now, Charlie's been making some amazing work with TensorFlow.js that keeps popping up in my stream, so I had to invite her to talk about some of her latest creations, including her own ML-based Fruit Ninja and even a system to detect running water to make sure you're washing your hands properly in the current times. So with that, Charlie, tell us more about yourself and what you've made. Um, so hi, I'm Charlie. Uh, I'm currently a senior front-end developer at Netlify. And on the side, I also do a lot of um, creative projects with technology and uh, human-computer interaction to kind of find new ways to interact with uh, interfaces uh, in JavaScript mostly. So this is where I use um, TensorFlow.js a lot. So uh, in terms of the two projects that I've, um, that I've built, uh, the Fruit Ninja clone or prototype is a web experiment that uses TensorFlow.js to play a game of Fruit Ninja in the browser, but with hand movements. So not using your trackpad, no touch screen uh, as you would usually expect, but it mixes motion tracking and 3D in the browser and collision detection as well. So the goal of the game is to slice some fruits and avoid uh, the bombs, but I basically wanted to experiment with making this game more uh, interactive. Uh, and when it comes to the water detection prototype, uh, it's a project that I wanted to build after um, Apple announced that they were releasing a new version of their Apple Watch OS that included a water detection um, uh, app that was uh, triggering a countdown to help ensure that people were washing their hands for 20 seconds. And I uh, only wanted to rebuild the same thing, but in, in JavaScript to kind of show the possibilities of uh, TensorFlow.js. Super cool. I mean, these are both really cool projects. And I know there was a lot of people looking at your very carefully perched MacBook on the side <laughs> of the water demo there. People were quite worried about the MacBook going in the water there. But um, I'd love to see them in action. Could you show us some of these? Um, so the, this water um, detection project that I called WashOS, uh -huh. uh, it uses a, a model a trained using the Teachable Machine platform. So uh, I wanted to be able to build a prototype quite quickly, like in a few, uh, not even in a few hours, but I recorded samples of audio of water running uh, in, my in my kitchen. And I used uh, transfer learning on the speech commons model that I then downloaded um, in, like I downloaded the model that was retrained to use it in my application. So um, I have a counter interface that uses the, the laptop's microphone to listen to sounds in the environment. And when it detects that what is going on around matches um, what the, the sound that I trained um, in Teachable Machine, so running water, it triggers the countdown from 20 to, to 0. So the main goal of this project was to show that you can build experiments at home without having to work um, at Apple or without having to know that much about machine learning. Uh, and one of the challenges with using this model is that it can only recognize a single sound at a time. So you have to take that into consideration when you when you build your project. So Teachable Machine is a great tool for like making things pretty fast for prototyping. And I'm just curious, like, how many sound samples did you need to get reasonable results for this project? So I was also concerned about uh, wasting water. So I only recorded the amount of samples that were uh, the minimum required. So I think it's about like eight, eight samples of two okay. seconds. Yeah, that's pretty so cool. I only yeah. trained the model um, twice um, just to be sure that I could get some like a good accuracy. But I also didn't want to waste too much water and it was a prototype. So I used the minimum, but you can definitely uh, record a lot more if you want more accuracy. Certainly. Very cool. Um, and then on to the second demo. So uh, this Fruit Ninja uh, clone was a bit more complicated because it took uh, it took longer to build because it incorporated more things. It wasn't only TensorFlow.js, it was also um, 3.js and it had to uh, do a bit of collision detection. But I started by implementing uh, the pose detection uh, to track my hands and have the, the location of my hands mapped to coordinates on the screen. Uh, but then I decided to build the game in 3D. So I used um, 3GS and I had to figure out how to map the 2D coordinates 
given by TensorFlow.js to 3D coordinates uh, in, in the 3GS scene. And so as the game relies on collision detection, uh, it had to detect when the coordinates of my hands were clashing with the 3D models, so either the fruits uh, or the bomb. Uh, and all of this happened in a 3D scene that has a different coordinate system. So I had to do some research and a lot of experimentation to get there. But once I managed to translate uh, the 2D coordinates to 3D, I implemented what is called uh, ray casting, to cast a ray between the hands and the 3D object to be able to detect um, collision and then either increase the points or make the player uh, lose. But um, it was more challenging, but it was really, really interesting. That's super cool. And it's interesting that you had to transform coordinate systems there to get the, the model playing nice of 3.js and this kind of stuff. I think I saw some similar things to people doing things with face mesh to understand the 3D face onto a 3D mesh and all this kind of stuff too. So um, these kinds of tools and uh, libraries that enable that will be super useful in the future as well, I'm sure. Now. Whilst we're talking about models, <laughs> I've got to ask, because maybe my team is watching uh, later on, um, what machine learning models would you love to see in the future that might be really helpful to you in your creative uh, process? Um, so there's two things that I could think of, but one of them is just like a, an improvement to a model. It's like I've been using hand pose, the hand pose model um, in one of my experiments, and I think at the moment it can only detect one hand at a time. And I think I saw a line that was saying, that the detection of both hands is going to come soon. And I'm really looking forward to it because I would love to be able to interact with interfaces with both hands. Um, but another one, another thing that I was thinking of that I would love, but I don't know if it's possible, uh, it's to it's a model that would recognize a sequence of movements, not only because if you uh, try teachable machine, you record one image at a time and the model uh, tries to recognize a pattern in images. But I would love a model that can um, that can track movements, not only just my hand is on the right, but that I'm doing a sequence of movement that can re be repeated. So I've been experimenting with that with hardware, but I'd love to be able to do that in the browser with the camera, uh, if possible, because then you could build a lot of experiments with this. That's, yeah, that's really useful feedback, actually. And I guess you yeah, have a gesture, the act of a gesture. So if you're like moving your hand in a certain way, you've got that time frame yes. that uh, uh, you're seeing those frames come together in a certain in a certain way. And that, that actually is something I believe you can do with Cloud AutoML right now. Um, and hopefully we can get back to export to TensorFlow.js or yes. something. That would be nice. <laughs> uh, no promises, but I should definitely pass on the feedback to the team and see where that goes. And then hand pose, yeah, having two hands makes complete sense. I think even I also gave a poke about that the other day. So <laughs> hopefully nice. we'll see that come through in the future as well. Cool. So. Next up, I guess, let's talk about these demos. Are they hosted somewhere? Um, can people go play with this right now? I'm sure people watching this want to go play with the Fruit Ninja and also, of course, to try out the taps with their laptops perched on the edge of the desks and all this kind of stuff. So um, how can they do that? Um, so I host most of my demos on uh, on Netlify. So the Fruit Ninja uh, game is on, I think, splat.netlify.app. And uh, WashOS is on wash-os.netlify.app. But otherwise, all the code is always uh, open source on GitHub. Uh, I want people to get into this space. So usually, all the repos are public. And if people want to have a look at the code, they, they can. Yeah, we'll put the links in the description after the show so people can click on those. So do check out the description uh, later on. Um, so I also want to ask you a little bit about what inspires you to make these creative ideas. Now, you know, I personally um, look for problems in my life and then I try and fix them and usually that ends up being popular with other people. But I'm just curious, as a fellow creative, what, what kind of pattern or approach do you use when you come up with these ideas? I think I probably do a bit of the of the same thing. I take inspiration from what's uh, around me. I think it'd be random. It doesn't have to be tech related. At first, sometimes I can go for a walk and then look at something and think, oh, how could I augment that with technology? Or uh, how could I change it to make it more interactive? That's, for example, what I did with the, uh, the Fruit Ninja game. It's like, what if I don't want to use my phone? Or what if I don't like joysticks and I want it to be more free? Um, so it's usually the process that I that I take. I read uh, research papers, for example, of around human computer uh, interaction, and I try to think how can I bring that to the web. Awesome, yeah, and I think the web is a great platform for prototyping, experimenting, and allowing everyone else to try it out afterwards. Of course, so that's always great. So we've got a lot of people from very diverse backgrounds watching today. Uh, do you have any advice for people wanting to take their first steps to make creative prototypes like this? Um, I would always advise to start small and to not be scared to uh, reproduce something that, you, that you've seen around and that excites you. I think uh, sometimes 
when people ask me exactly the same question, they, they expect to have an idea that has never been done before, before they start looking into that. And that is very rare. Um, so I would usually advise to, if there's, if, if you, came across a project that excites you, there's a reason why it excites you and you will definitely keep going and keep learning if, if you do something that you're uh, interested in. A lot of my experiments start exactly that way. Uh, I'm inspired by something that I see uh, either in tech or in other fields or done in other languages. And I try to reproduce that and add my touch to it. It's like, oh, now that I figured out how this works, how can I add something uh, onto it? And so you don't have to follow a tutorial if, if the project is not something that interests you, but find something that you're uh, that you're excited about and kind of make it your own. Um, that's one advice that I could think of. Yeah, often the hardest bit is to get the momentum going, and then you know, as yes. you start adding to it, it just evolves into something beyond what you actually were originally trying to to clone or something. But it becomes your own piece of uh, you know creativity in the end. So that's definitely uh, some good advice there. Um, so with that, thank you very much, Charlie, for joining us today. It's been great having you on the show, and I look forward to seeing what you create in the future. Thank you. Wow, that was some pretty cool creative coding right there. And I love the very bold move of perching the laptop on the sink edge in the name of research, of course. I think the live chat were very concerned about that. <laughs> I saw one question actually about um, using TensorFlow.js on IoT devices like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. We actually run on the Raspberry Pi via Node.js, so it is possible to control hardware with JavaScript via Node on the Raspberry Pi. I'm not sure about Arduino, I have to get back to you on that one, but for now, Raspberry Pi does indeed work. Uh, do reach out to Charlie in the live chat if you have any other questions you want to ask her, and now we'll head over to presenter number four. So next up, we have Christina all the way from Spain, who's been very busy creating some super cool yoga instructor powered by TensorFlow.js. So Christina, tell us more about this. Hi, Jason. Um, so my name is Christina, as you said. Um, I'm a student at the University of Manchester, and I've developed yoga AI this past three months. So I got the idea from uh, my internship. I did a year-long internship at a very big um, IT company mm -hmm. and they were doing really cool stuff with machine learning and I really wanted to get involved. So I was also doing a bit of yoga. Um, they're very expensive in London, so I only did a couple <laughs> classes. So I'm, I'm not even really good at them, which is like ironic. I'm sure you're better than me though. I, I, I'm, I'm terrible at yoga. So. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of put two and two together and I decided to create yoga AI. I spoke to some of my coworkers who um, gave me really cool um, uh, YouTube playlist to follow, to learn a bit about it. Um, to I taught myself JavaScript from YouTube, and awesome. I also they, yeah, they also introduced me to TensorFlow, which is what I used to create this um, AI model. So this sounds really cool, and I'm sure everyone watching right now wants to see it in action. So can you show us and tell us more about your, the creation and? Yeah, of course. Perfect. So this is the landing page. Um, so you have two options: learn and practice. Mm -hmm. So if you go to learn. Basically, this section is to learn the poses. I've basically classified six main poses, and you can hold them for 10 seconds. The timer resorts if you make a mistake. So as you can see, if you hold the mountain pose for 10 seconds, the counter starts going down. And if it notices you're not doing the pose, it stops. And then once it detects another pose, and if it's wrong, it, the timer restarts. <laughs> um, this is a bit complicated. Um, it was quite hard to think of the logic behind it, but as you can see, it works. And um, this is a tree pose. Yeah, already that's much more yoga than I can do. So <laughs> very impressed. <laughs> so I'm curious to learn a little bit more about the like, how you're doing this pose estimation. Um, like, how are you achieving that? So I'm using TensorFlow's PostNet to detect the, um, po the different points in the body. Okay, cool. And was that trained via Teachable Machine or did you manage to take the raw data and then you, you see when it's in roughly the right position? Or what, what's the algorithm for detecting the actual pose? Because I think PoseNet allows you to get the points, but it won't tell you you're in a tree, for example. So that, how are you determining what a tree actually is? So I used another um, machine learning model on top of it using ah. a classification model from ML5.js. Ah, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you're basically feeding the first model into the second, and then the second is taking that data 
and trying to learn um, from that as to when the tree pose is, is, is achieved. Okay, perfect. Um, so what were the challenges and uh, maybe even delightful things you discovered when using TensorFlow.js and the PoseNet model? Um, so surprisingly, the machine learning bit was the easiest. I think the hardest bit was to think through the logic of the the actual application. So when you were doing certain pose and you did a mistake, yeah. you don't want to be penalized immediately because uh -huh. it could also mean that the machine learning model had detected something um, incorrect. Slightly an error or something like this. Yeah. 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 So it was quite hard to think through the logic of it, especially when the um, the model is constantly trying to detect new poses and making it link to the count down was quite difficult. And I'm actually pretty sure I didn't do it very well. Like I'm pretty sure it could be made even better. But I think that um, considering it's my first project, it's more than enough at the moment. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I'm just curious, like how much training data did you need to like recognize a pose? Did you have to repeat it like 10 times, 30 times? Like what gave you good results, I guess? So I did um like in the span of 30 seconds, I would do a video clip of me performing the pose. And I, I did that I did that like three to four times. No. Okay, so not too much needed to get some yeah, results yeah. like this. And I must say, I've, I've tried this out myself um, uh, after you sent me the demo and like, I'm terrible at yoga, but I did manage to hold a few poses for, for the 10 seconds that was required. And it does work really well. I, I, there's one where you do have to stand on one leg and this kind of stuff and I fell over and it did pause the timer. Um, so it's really cool to try out. But yes, it's, it's a great fun way to kind of get some exercise, especially in the current time. So it, it's really cool. Um, so if people want to try this out right now, how can they actually do that? Is it available live on a website somewhere? Yeah, it's on a website. I think the link is going to be in the description okay, of the video, yeah. I think. Yeah. And um, also my code is available on GitHub. And I also have links to my references and the YouTube channels that I um, followed. I guess, Christina, like, what are your future plans for this? Is it fully polished or do you have some other things you want to add to this yoga, maybe more poses or more more uh, interesting graphics and things like this? So I definitely have ideas in ways I could improve it. Obviously, the most obvious idea is to create an app, not just a website. Um, uh -huh. I also wanted to make it more animated, but my web development skills aren't that developed yet. <laughs> sure, um, yeah. And I also had the idea of putting some sound into it because obviously when you're doing yoga practice, you don't want to be looking at a screen constantly. True. Yeah, you might be looking downwards or something. So you can't see the screen exactly. in that situation. Yeah. That makes complete sense. That's really cool. Do you have any advice for others who might be getting started just like you? Maybe they're new to JavaScript, new to machine learning. What tools and resources did you use to get started that might help others? Um, so I use the coding train YouTube. He ah, is cool. a professor at NYU. He's great. His videos are super engaging too. So I would definitely recommend his YouTube videos. And I also would say that um, try everything out. Like if you have the craziest idea, like why not? Um, yeah. You're going to learn from literally everything. I've learned things from doing this, which I couldn't, never have imagined like and also there's things i've learned which i still don't understand which is good right like it's just <laughs> but that's step. okay it's yeah it's completely fine to kind of peel away the onion layer by layer as you need to right there's no need to dive right into the lower level details and machine learning is like a very complex beast myself included it takes me a long time to start peeling away those layers so um i think it's completely fine to just start at the top and then as you need to go deeper and deeper to do what you need to do right so that's cool yeah exactly Cool. Thank you very much, Christina, for sharing us that. And of course, uh, everyone else, do go check that out right now after the show. And thank you very much for presenting today, Christina. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Amazing work by Christina there for all the yoga lovers watching right now. And I saw some people want me to do yoga poses in the live chat. Maybe if we get to a thousand viewers, I will do some yoga poses for you. <laughs> I'm always delighted to see how far our community can push our pre-made models with a little bit of creativity to use in really useful ways. And I saw some people asking, like, is it possible to do this kind of stuff using ImageNet by retraining this? And of course, there's many ways to solve a problem and you can use our PoseNet or ImageNet and you can get different results, see what works and do an experiment and see what works best for you. 
Now, if you've got questions for Christina, do leave her a message in the live chat and onwards we go to our next presenter who helps you fulfill your sci-fi dreams. So next up, we've got Anders from Denmark, who's created a very neat experiment for human computer interaction to control elements of a web page using your body. So tell us more about this, Anders. Who are you and what have you made? Yeah, so I'm Anders. I work at um, an agency called Hello Monday, which is a creative studio. Um, and we made a, a demo um, that uses hand posts. It started out with, we did like a, a small test with hand pose where you had your hands and you could see like in a, in a 3D Tron-like uh, uh, interface and, and, and move that around. And I think we're just thinking, well, you know, this technology is extremely fascinating just that you can, you just have a webcam and a browser and then basically that can detect all your hand movements and, and gestures and things like that. So I think we... We talked about well, is there a use case other than maybe making something that's that's fun that that we could use it for? Um, so we ended up trying to do um, what I would say like is a is a quick take on how how would we translate um, like gestures into something that you could you could use um, like if I do this, do I move stuff and and so forth. That's and, super cool. And so Very sci-fi movie like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. It was um, you know, back with minority report and all of that. That's it, right. it seemed like yes. that was that yeah, that was kind of the the rage and then it it faded down a little bit and and then but basically you're, you're creating of... all of our dreams that we wanted, uh, making it a reality, which is awesome. And, you know, I, I, I've, I've seen some of the demos um, prior to the show, of course, and like it looks amazing. And, uh, you know, besides being just a super fun project to try as well, this opens up a lot of kind of interesting opportunities for accessibility as well. Maybe people are not so good at moving uh, the hands for the mouse. Um, having gesture recognition like this could be very useful for human computer interaction and that kind of stuff too. So I think this kind of stuff has a lot of uh, use cases in the real world as well. And it can run anywhere in the web and anywhere JavaScript can run, which is awesome. So maybe we can see it in action. Uh, you can show us more and tell us how it works. So we did a small website where it's called touch-less.dev. So the idea here is that um, we try to see how could we make a website that you could just interact with, with just your hands. So the using different gestures. So you need to do like a, a drag gesture to move things around and you need to do a, a, like hover your hand over an object to, um, to kind of select it. And, yeah. And then spread your fingers to, to click it. Um, so that's kind of the basic interactions that you need to do. Um, and, and so just with, those three interactions, we try to uh, think about well, what what's a what's a good use case, and um, you know we have a lot of touch screens that's kind of out in the wild when you check in for a flight or when you order a, you know at a restaurant like a burger or something like that. Then you you know we all touch the same screens, and um, on those screens, you know there's a lot of bacteria, and with you know the situation right now, you know it it gets even worse. But so. I think we just wanted to to explore. Well, is it possible to just with hand gestures um, somehow do those same interactions? Yeah, but that's really cool. And basically, you know, given the current times as well, this is very nice. Um, you can still have input interact with a kiosk or something out in the wild, and uh, you know, you don't need to be touching it physically, which is really nice too. Um, and and also you know just to, just to point out here this is just running on a regular laptop there's no special hardware using here right it's just a regular webcam yeah yeah it's just a uh, you know the chrome browser uh, or you can do it in in multiple browsers and and a webcam so it's really easy just to to get a get set up and 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 try hacking away at um, which i think is is extremely extremely fun awesome yeah and i'm just looking at the video right now and like it's um you know, really seamless interaction. It seems to be very smooth, uh, very fluid. I love the UX going on here as well. It's, it's, I, having played with this a little bit myself, it's like super fun to try and drag it around and uh, all this kind of stuff. And uh, I think, as, as you mentioned, it's it's nice to like practice a little bit, but once you get into the flow, uh, it becomes quite natural and um, second nature, which is awesome. Yeah, it takes a little bit of 
of getting used to. Um, I've I've tested it on uh, unfortunately a lot of people who've done a lot of things which I knew was was wrong. So it is a little, little bit like using the mouse for the first time, trying to figure out well how do I how do I move my hand correctly and uh, you know, like doing this and this, like remembering those gestures. So there's there's a there's a learning curve to it. So I wouldn't say you know this is more kind of proof of concept demos but all of it needs needs more work but it's a i think it's kind of you know someone can like use it as a, as a starting point if they want to download the code and and you know try and 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 work a little bit more on it sure that makes sense and i see now you're even drawing with your hands too so you can even be creative and artistic so <laughs> really cool stuff so i noticed you were speaking about using hand pose to create this? Um, was it just hand pose you used? Did you combine with any other models? Or maybe in the future, would you think of combining with other models? Could that be of use to you? I'm just curious to see where you're going uh, further down the line, maybe. Yeah, I think um, like right now we just use hand pose. Um, I'm, I, I've used a lot of the other um, models, you know, the pre-made models that have, like body picks and uh, I think this face API JS that was out before. Uh, what's it called? Face mesh. Is Face that, mesh. Uh... Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, so um, you know, all of them, you know, are pretty plug and play. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out how to do something creative with it. Um, so, I think our kind of next step is to, when we've done this, then we thought, well, you know, I think we want to make our start to make our own models and and figure out how do you do that uh, as well. So I think that's that's kind of the the natural next step. Awesome! I'm excited to see uh, as you progress on your learning journey uh, what you end up creating as well. Super excited to see that. And Ben, I guess the only thing I want to ask you to wrap things up here is, uh, you know, I know you've been tinkering with TensorFlow.js for a little while now, and you've made many amazing demos. You should definitely check out their their Twitter account with all their awesome TensorFlow.js demos. But how easy was it to get started with the uh, uh, hand pose model and TensorFlow.js. Yeah, I think um, hand pose was very easy to get started with. It's you know follow the instructions on on npm or just download it via that, and 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 you're good to go. Um, I think the the documentation is is really good, and uh, I think it's a matter of the, the the hard part is is figuring out well, what should I you know how do I do something you know that both either creative or fun or something like that. But but getting started with it is uh, as with the other models that I've tried, um, is is really plug and play. I'd say. Where did your inspiration come from for the creative side of this? Did you just did it come to you in a dream? Like, okay, I'm going to use this gesture for that, or like how? What was your process for that? I'm just curious. Yeah, I think we we played around a lot with with hand pose, and and so kind of also figuring out well, what is you know, some of the gestures it's better at than others? Uh, right. For example, yeah, but figure out the limitations. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, like um, so, we ended up having drag, which I think can do like ninety nine percent. That's always right, and then this is ninety nine percent always right, and then we, we want really want the pinch because you know it's a little bit of lighter uh, movement that you make, but it seems like maybe that's like a ninety percent like out of our experience. You know, this depends on lighting and, and so forth, but that's how we did. So that we ended up with doing you know spread your fingers to click instead. Which is a uh, yeah a bit unnatural, but it was much easier for the hand pose model to detect. So I guess yeah, that leads me on to my next question. Then is uh, you know, what are you hoping to maybe explore in the future to improve upon this maybe or to refine this model to make it more robust for these finer grain gestures? Yeah, so um, we're actually planning on on doing a, a another project like a follow up to this because I think we had some learnings about you know what works and and what and what doesn't work and uh, also you know we want to get better at tensorflow so I, the, the next idea would be that we try and and train our own model and so for that we're making a project that we are right now it's a working title we're calling the helping hands project which will be a, a <laughs> yeah it will be a, just a website where people can can take in a picture of their hand and then we're actually going to be use hand pose as the as the starting point so that will help you find the hand and then you go in and kind of correct all the key points that maybe hand pose didn't mm, get nice. right. Yeah, yeah. And then we're gonna, uh, yeah, share you know all that the hand data set with everyone. So, I to be honest, I don't know if we we are good enough at building uh, the data set, but at least we can we can gather that. Oh, we can gather the data, but 
can we also train the model? But at least I'm sure you'll get there. Train the be, it'll yeah, be a learning it's a, it's experience, a process. I'm sure, but yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you have a good time. And I, I think that's really cool, like doing that like live in the browser where you can just ask someone to do a pose. You can maybe have a video playing, like do this, and then they do that. And then they, we kind of see with the hand pose model if it got it roughly correct. And if it didn't, they can just tweak the, the points as needed to make it perfect. And then that can be submitted as the data um, for for that for that pose essentially, which is really nice and um, makes it super easy for the user to contribute. And if you get thousands of people doing this, then maybe that could lead to some really interesting results, certainly. So um, yeah, I guess we can add the link to the description as well after the show for people who are interested in contributing. And uh, please do, let's make all the machine learning models better and um, less biased and all this kind of stuff. So uh, awesome stuff. Cool. Yeah, we're hoping people you know, want to contribute with it and, and that we can you know, all help kind of make this better in the future. Awesome. I look forward to seeing the results. <laughs> Me too. So I guess the final thing to say here is, can people try this out right now? What is available to use and maybe what's coming? Yeah, they can try, try it out now. They can try it out at touch dash. Uh, less dot dev, and in there they can they can try out the the different demos and the code is also open source, so everyone can go in and and download it and and hopefully, you know, be inspired by it or make it better. It uses a uh, off screen canvas for some of the 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 work, um, so you unfortunately can't use it at Firefox yet, but all other browsers it should work in. And I guess the reason you did that was to have it in a separate like web worker, so it's in a separate thread or um Yeah, it was kind of to offload like so we could have the graphics uh, reacting a little bit faster. Uh, it uses some processing power. Yeah. Awesome. So thanks for that. We'll put the link in the description after the show. Do go check that out and we hope you enjoy using it as much as I have. And with that, thank you very much, Anders, for coming today and showing all the amazing things you've created. It's great having you on the show. And we look forward to seeing even more stuff from you in the future. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Jason. It was a, it was a pleasure and a big thank you to the whole TensorFlow team. And uh, it's amazing that we get all of these open source models um, that, we can, that we can work with and, and, and play with. Cool, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Amazing. I always get super excited when little parts of sci-fi movies become a reality in some shape or form. And thank you, Anders, for that great demo. And do hit that like button if you're enjoying this show. This is our first time on the TensorFlow YouTube channel, so it really helps us to be invited back again in the future. Now, I saw a question about the, uh, can this be used in Chrome extensions? The short answer is yes, TensorFlow.js can run in this context. I actually made a demo quite recently where you could join a Google Hangout with a custom effects applied to the video powered by machine learning in TensorFlow.js, and it worked just fine. So do check that out if you want to use Chrome extensions. Uh, and of course, reach out to Anders in the live chat if you have any further questions for him. He's live right now over there. And let's head onwards to our next demo. So it's always great to see when people are using TensorFlow.js in novel ways. And today, I'm joined by Benson all the way from Australia to show us his project around natural language processing. So Benson, uh, tell us more about yourself and what you've created. Hi, everyone. My name is Benson Rand. I'm from Sydney, Australia. I work as a tech lead in a FinTech company. I love all the cool stuff that machine learning and TensorFlow creates. I enjoy sharing knowledge and ideas with the developer community. I think machine learning and TensorFlow talk JS is fun and it can make our lives better. So it's an amazing thing to see more and more people are getting interested in TensorFlow.js. And thanks to Jason to having me here today to talk about my adventure of TensorFlow.js. Thank you very much for joining. Um, so tell us more about the project and what it does. The demo I would like to share today is about um, Twitter sentiment analysis with TensorFlow.js. Sentiment analysis is the process of analyzing a piece of online writing like tweets or comments um, to classify whether the emotion of the user is positive, negative, or neutral. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very powerful tool for business to monitor and understand the social sentiment of the brand 
the product, the service. So I built a dashboard that you can enter a hashtag that you care about and see how people are talking about it on Twitter. Uh, maybe we can see it in action. Let's try some hashtags out, I guess. Sure thing. So let me bring up the demo page. So as you can see, this is a very simple interface. So in here, you can enter the hashtag that you care about. For example, I would like to see how people are talking about machine learning mm -hmm. on Twitter. So I can search, then it connects to the Twitter API, bring down some latest tweets with the hashtag machine learning. Now you can see on the left-hand side, we have a pie chart to indicate the percentage that people are feeling positive or negative or neutral. And on the right-hand side, I have grouped those tweets into those three classifications. And for each tweet, there's a score indicating the sentiment. So from zero to point street, it is classified as negative. From point three to point six, it is neutral. Mm -hmm. Then above point six, it will be positive. Awesome. And it's great to see that we're seeing 70% positive for machine learning. So clearly, everyone is very excited about this right now. That's great to see. And maybe one more for luck, um, something random again. What can we do? Feel free to pick anything you like. How about um, dessert? Dessert, yes. Something very dear to my heart. <laughs> I think this is definitely working as intended. I, I'm sure that most people are going to be positive about desserts. <laughs> very cool. So, so tell us more about how this is working behind the scenes, then. Maybe you can show us more details. Sure. So I implemented this demo by five simple steps. So start with, you need to register a Twitter API. Mm -hmm. So you need to go to the Twitter developers platform, register and create a Twitter app yeah. and generate the API key and the XX key for you to use. Sure. The second step is to get tweets from the Twitter search API. Mm -hmm. Now you connect to the Twitter search API, you pass the hashtag in your query read, and then it can pull down some latest tweets from the Twitter with your hashtag. And these are pulling back tweets uh, from all time or the last few minutes or? It would be the last 10 minutes. Okay, cool. The first step is to load the sentiment model into the browser. So this is done by calling the tf.lowlayers model function inside tensorflow.js. Uh -huh. yes. Then the model will be loaded into the browser. Then the fourth step is to predict the tweet text sentiment. So for each of the tweet text, fit the tweet text through the model that will load it into the browser. And use the model.predict function inside tensorflow.js. Then it will perform the sentiment analysis and return a score between zero and one to indicate whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. Then the last step is just displaying it, the result in the pie chart and group those tweets into three classifications. So awesome. that's yeah. pretty much how I implement it. I think it's simple and it would be a good start point for beginners of machine learning to build a side project using TensorFlow.js. Cool. Well, that, that's awesome. I'm sure other people might be interested in this as well. So um, if people want to try this out right now, can they? Is this live somewhere that people can, can find this website and try it out themselves? Um, go to the URL in the description below. So that's the demo's URL. I've also sure. documented the implementation details of the demo and the source code is also available open source in GitHub. Sounds good. And I guess looking towards the future, 
Uh, where do you see this going in the future? Are you going to turn this into like a service or maybe um, add more features? What plans do you have uh, further down the line? I think to take this to the, the next level, there are several things to be on my to-do list. Firstly, I can integrate it with um, some other social media platforms like nice. Facebook, yeah. Reddit, yeah. Quero, Art. Secondly, um, I can expand the model for other languages like Chinese, oh, very nice. Spanish, yeah, that's very useful. French. Yeah. And lastly, I think it'd be more powerful to use it together with other neutral language processing techniques yeah. like contextual semantic search so that you can also find out what aspect of the brand is user discussing about, whether they're complaining about the price or the customer service or the product quality. Sure. So I think yeah. it would be very useful. Lots of options to explore there. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Benson, and good luck on your future adventures. I'm sure many people might want to contribute as well, so I'm sure they'll be in touch. But thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thanks again to Benson. It's nice to see some demos using other forms of machine learning, such as natural language processing. Now, do remember, if you have ideas or want to hang out with our community after the show, we'll be inviting our viewers today to hang out, to ask questions, or find people to work with on cool ideas you might have. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you've got questions for Benson, feel free to reach him in the live chat right now whilst we head on to the next demo. Okay, so now we're heading all the way over to India to meet Shivay, who's created an awesome workout system powered by TensorFlow.js. Hi, Shivay, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing fine, how are you, Jason? Great, so I'd love to hear more about who you are and what you've created. Please tell us more. Absolutely, thanks for, so first of all, a very big thank you for, you know, having me over uh, on the TensorFlow show and tell. You know, I've been absolutely loved and amazed by, you know, the first two editions. Uh, so quickly introducing myself, I'm Shivai Lamba, currently residing in India. I'm uh, having more than six years of uh, professional experience in web development and machine learning. And I just recently graduated from my undergrad in computer science. Yeah, so I'm just looking forward, you know, to working more in the open source and uh, generally, I mean, in the tech world, because I mean, it's lovely. Uh, so, you know, the idea behind this particular, you know, uh, physiotherapy assistant. So I call it Aiden, you know, uh, and uh, the main, you know, motive behind, uh, you know, making this uh, particular, uh, you know, w hack was that, you know, uh, normally, you know, for the, all those people who are working full-time jobs, you know, they're not sitting in front of the computer for hours and hours, you know, up to 10, 12 hours a day. So they barely, you know, get time to even do some kind of exercise. And usually if you're, you know, you're sitting in the same posture, uh, then what, what happens is that over time it can actually, you know, develop into a lot of different ailments. So, I mean, you could have cervical problems or, you know, muscular pain. Yeah. So, you know, that requires a, 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 like a visit to the physiotherapist or, you know, at, le at least a regular exercise. But mm -hmm. these people cannot even go, you know, they don't even have time to go to the physiotherapist. So, I mean, what, uh, you know, what if we can, you know, make like a virtual physiotherapist. So that was my main motive, you know, behind uh, making this hack. That's awesome. I, I love the source of inspiration there. And especially in the current times, it's great to encourage people to exercise and all this stuff as well. And you know, kind of cure some of these things that could happen when everyone's stuck at home, uh, staying Absolutely. in one position and all this kind of stuff too. So this is super cool. Um, I, I'd love to see more. So can you show us a demo? Sure. Uh, so, I mean, if you just play, uh, basically, you know, our platform is called Aiden and, you know, it like it's a one stop stop for all your virtual, uh, you know, uh, physiotherapy needs. So basically, you, you know, when, you know, when we start by clicking on that uh, button, uh, basically it will open up a with, like a UI uh, where you will find a virtual assistant and, you know, you will find like a screen where you can actually see uh, that, you know, uh, the different kind of exercises that are, you know, catered specifically for that particular reason. So you start by, you know, uh, entering your, uh, like uh, allowing your access to the camera and to the microphone. And then what, as you can see that uh, basically we use PoseNet and uh, depending on the stretch. exercise. So the first one is back bend. And in case, you know, like if you are doing something wrong, so this virtual assistant will actually tell you that, you know, you're uh, doing something wrong. So it could be like, you know, your knees are too bent or you're standing too straight or your back is too, you know, too much bent. And let's say, you know, uh, in case, uh, 
and you are actually doing it correctly uh, for let's say you know a certain number of uh, well, seconds sure. then in that scenario what it will do is that um, it will actually you know tell you okay that you're doing it correctly you have to do it for 10 seconds and then you know you move on to uh, the next exercise. exercise so let's say in this case i was doing a back bend and it recognized that you know once i had made bend. the correct posture uh, it uh, you know uh, it continued it for 10 seconds and then what it will Hold do is that once that seconds. you know uh, recognize that it will move on to the next exercise so this way you know we can have like multiple exercises and you know like let's say in the in in the scenario you are doing something wrong it will actually give you feedback so the virtual assistant actually speaks out as well that you know if your uh, certain body part is too bent or it's i mean you should bend it more so i mean this is how you uh, you can actually get to know of real time feedback as well on your that's exercise. awesome and i i love that it speaks out so that we can get the audio feedback especially when you're looking at your feet or you're concentrating on the exercise i'm terrible at balancing so i have to you know look at where what i'm doing Yeah. Um, so that's really nice to have that audio feedback as well. Um and I also love the futuristic interface that you have there. That's really awesome. Uh if we're like in yeah. some sci-fi movie <laughs> working out. <laughs> so really cool stuff. Um so I believe you uh, mentioned at some point that you're using PoseNet to power this. Um is it just PoseNet or using any any other models like Face Mesh or just just PoseNet on its own first of all? So I'll just, uh, you know basically go through how we came up with this. So basically we used uh, the Teachable Machine PoseNet uh, module, you know, because that gives us uh, the PoseNet directly. You know, uh, we can use it. So what we did was that we uh, made sure that you know we had the correct posture. So we got a professional physiotherapist, right? And uh, then uh, what we did was uh, we captured more than thousand images for each and every different uh, posture, right? and then you know we created like separate models for each one of them so i mean like say if we have 10 different exercises we had 10 different models that we load each and every time we do an exercise interesting so you have a model per per kind of pose that you're trying to yeah. uh, uh or routine even that you want to recognize um, that's cool that's an interesting way of going about it Cool. So I I noticed that you used a teachable machine to generate multiple models for different poses and different exercise routines. I'm just curious to know why you took that approach. So, uh, you know, the main reason that why we decided to go with, you know, creating multiple models uh, and you know, multiple models for each and every different pose was that, you know, let's let's say if you would have created like, you know, a single uh, you know, single teachable machine with multiple classes and each class, you know, belong to each and every different pose. so there is you know a, a higher uh, you know uh, error you know rate that might take place let's say you know between two very similar kind of exercise poses so uh, sort of eliminate that you know that aspect what we did uh, was that created uh, like individual teachable machine for each and every different pose and since you know the uh, flow of the application is such that you know we have uh, one uh, exercise at a time so we go from one exercise to the next one uh, i i thought that you know this will be much better for the accuracy and that is why i just decided to go for uh, one uh, you know one pose for each and every different teeth people yeah. model so understanding the context you know allows you to then have a better accuracy on the thing you're trying to define and absolutely yeah that makes sense so if people want to try this out right now <laughs> i guess is there a code pen or a glitch or a website they can go to sure uh, so basically again you know since this uh, entire project just uses uh, the posenet uh, you know teachable machine models so there is nothing that is you know on the server side it's completely running on the client side itself and you know that is the power of uh, uh, tensorflow js right so uh, i have uh, made a you know op- open source uh, github link and people you know can directly go and try this out uh, the only working feature right now that is not there is basically i used uh, the microsoft azure and we can also use google uh, you know gcp translation api which basically what you do is that you can actually speak you know let's say start the start the exercise or you know uh-huh. you can speak it in any la- native language and what it, cool. it does is that it will convert that into first into english and it will process it and again you know the virtual assistant can also speak in the language of your choice so, so i basically, also added that yeah the only server side dependency is the voice generation essentially yeah, yeah. okay yeah. cool So that's really cool. So I guess we'll put the links in the description so everyone can can go to that after the show and uh, and try it out, I guess. Absolutely. So I'm also curious to know more about your plans for the future for this project. Uh, do you have any kind of ideas where this might head? Uh so you know, I have been really uh you know amazed by some of the various, you know, innovative solutions that have come up during this covid. 
uh, specifically you know uh, apps like house party which you know allow you to network with other people uh, in you know like a chat room or you know uh, specifically for you know for people to be able to uh, share their experiences together under you know one app because you know uh, there's so much social distancing and not going allowed right now so i would like to you know create like a multi purpose application where you know uh, we can have multiple people come in together and exercise at the same time so oh, you know, nice. using some, yeah so using things like webrtc socket io which can allow for multi people you know to come in together and we can also have like a challenge based system where you know we can give a score based on how accurately and how quickly one can you know get adjusted to the correct posture so it all will it will have an element of gamification as well but i mean i have see you know this heading in that direction I think that could be really interesting actually uh, making it gamified in that way. I think as an individual I struggle to do exercise because it's not exciting enough for me, but if I was competing against you, first of all you'd probably win, but also like you know it'd be much more fun for me to like have that comp- competitive nature when doing that as well and you can kind of Absolutely. see the stats of different people and you can have your daily charts or weekly charts so that'd be really yeah. interesting. I look forward to seeing that. and uh, you know there's also one social component uh, attached to it is that you know uh, so since we have this kind of a voice back feature uh, you know which gives you the feedback based on the exercise they're doing so let's say you know if someone uh, is visually impaired as well uh, this could potentially help them out as well you know instead of seeing themselves that if they're doing a posture correctly uh, if they're at home and you know if the f- computer system can actually tell them the ai can tell them that you know if the posture sure. is not correct So it could sure. potentially help those people out as well. Yeah, I can imagine even like um, going deeper on the description of the voice stuff. For if people are struggling to see, generally, then you can actually be more descriptive in those voice uh, actions as well to go even further. So that that's really nice. And then finally, Shabe, I know you're very active in the community. I think you've actually attended pretty much every talk I've ever given on TensorFlow JS. So thank you very much for being there. Um, I'm just curious to know what you're most excited about TensorFlow JS and what makes you use it for all your prototypes and so on and so forth. And I'd love to hear a bit more about your story there. So, uh, you know, I have been a web developer uh, ever since my high school. So, I mean, I do have now almost six years of you know uh, web development, and I got interested into machine learning as well, and uh, that was around you know a couple of years back. But you know, one of the main uh, issues that I used to find was you know if I want to deploy my machine learning model on the you know on uh, my website then you you have to like create a, a python package and then you have to export that you know uh, to a django or a flask application or in case if you're using node js again it, it required a lot of different steps but you know once uh, tensorflow js was you know launched it first of all eliminated you know that need i mean that kind of dependency that was you know like let's say a 3 to 4 step it directly just converted into one step process so all your all your different activities or you know algorithms that you can run on the client side itself and even if you have like a very custom built model now you have the ability to convert into a tensorflow js model and directly just use it with your web application so that you know that love for uh, the web development and machine learning as i mean it is growing actually quite uh, fast as well amongst a lot of different people that was probably the ultimate source for me you know to as a uh, as a motivation to you know work around it and also spread about you know spread the knowledge about it and i really got inspired by your works as well and that is you know that put me in the pursuit to uh, do the same awesome well thank you very much for sharing your story with us today and uh, hopefully see more of your work in the future thank you very much shivay absolutely thank you jason thank you again shivay for that great demo and of course for being part of the tensorflow js community I actually saw a few people asking on social how to get featured on the show and tell. Basically, if you make a cool demo and you use a made with tfjs hashtag one word on social, uh, we'll find those demos and the best ones that we find will showcase in future show and tells and maybe even events in the future. So do use that hashtag if you make anything cool. Now, if you've got any questions, once again, use that live chat whilst we head on to our next guest. So next we're going to head over to James from the USA to show us an amazing prototype that allows you to visualize the pose of a human form in mixed reality over time. Over to you James, tell us more about what you've created. Hi Jason, uh, first of all thank you for uh, having me. Uh, no problem. My name is James Sa, Sa Jung Hoon. Uh, originally from Korea, I'm now uh, living in Boston area. Mm-hmm. Uh, the project that I've created with uh, TensorFlow.js that I'd like to show you is 
something I've titled Atomodo, which is an Italian combination of words saying uh, a movement or action. Um, and uh, one of the things I've always been interested in is uh, a type of data visualization where multiple points of time and space are brought together into a uh, coherent whole in a single context and presented mm -hmm. visually, whether on paper, photograph, on screen, or in my case, in uh, augmented reality, AR. So uh, some inspirations are uh, scientists slash artists like Harold Edgerton or uh, Edward Mybridge, who've taken uh, photographs of uh, tennis rackets or uh, running horses, and yeah. presented them so that you can get a, a understanding in one image uh, how the motion is is happening. Through yeah, I've seen some of those in the old days. You can see them kind of like frame by frame, exactly. like dead upon each other. Using really electronic cool. flashes or multiple exposures. So um, fast forward to today or recent today, uh, when I saw that uh, PoseNet mm -hmm. uh, was made available, and you could very easily, uh, with a bit of tinkering, get. Uh, pose estimation and uh, positions of bot different body parts yeah. in images or video, uh, I thought that uh, given my current interest also in augmented reality, that I might be able to combine a few things together and come up with a visualization that takes uh, those inspirations I had and brings them into, into AR using uh, tensorflow.js. Awesome, that sounds super cool. Uh, I'm really excited to see this in action. Can you show me? This is the sketch that I've made. Um, what you're seeing is a very short looping video clip uh -huh. of a, uh, a martial artist doing his routine. And what I'm doing is using PoseNet to extract the, uh, the, the pose of the different body parts and extruding it in both time and space in augmented reality so that you get cool. <laughs> the 3D form slash visualization. I was going for something that felt uh, almost sculptural that you could walk around. Yeah. Um, and uh, of course, it's in AR, so you can, it, this is running on a mobile device. So you can actually yes. walk around and get different perspectives on the data as, as it's being uh, presented to you. And I, I assume you're using uh, WebXR to implement this or something else? That's right. The yeah. XR portion of it is uh, I'm actually using a very early uh, a library for uh, called p5.xr, which oh, is cool. a library for p5.js that allows you to build uh, AR and VR applications. So that's in early stages, but it is built on top of WebXR, the standard WebXR. Um, so this sketch, uh, right now it's not public yet, but when I do make it public, you'll be able to run it on um, Chrome on Android, you be able mm -hmm. to run it on uh, Mozilla's WebXR viewer on iOS. Nice. Uh, you, you won't need any native applications to to be able to see this. That's super cool. Uh, I I know that it's kind of an emerging technology for the web standards right now. So it's great that we can now do this on Android and and iOS via Mozilla. So um, hoping in the future it will just become you know bread and butter for all users to to use out of the box, which would be great. Um, so. I guess uh, you said you're using PoseNet for this model. Is there any reason you chose that over, say, other things that might exist? Or um, did you find any kind of uh, limitations of that that you would like to see improved in the future? I'm just curious about your experience there. Or did it work pretty well for the uh, content that you had? Well, it was very easy. Uh, it was from simply uh, having an idea and looking at the documentation and figuring out which pieces to put together with PoseNet, uh, TensorFlow.js, um, yeah. and uh, P5.js code. Putting it all together was, was quite simple. Um, I think there's a lot of other things that I could do with it, taking it forward. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the simplicity and the way things you could plug it all together uh, was, was very um, attractive, very helpful. OK, that's good to know. And I'm sure everyone watching right now is probably asking, shouting at the screens, like, how can we try this? Is there a way for them to try it right now? Is it live somewhere to try? Yes, it's publicly available. Uh, the exact link uh, they can find on my Twitter feed. My Twitter awesome. username is at lossless, L-O-S-S-L-E-S-S. -S -S. And 
there will be details there on what kind of browsers and platforms they will need, but it should work fine on both Android and iOS in the appropriate browsers. Great. Awesome. So yeah, go follow James on Twitter and we'll also put the link in the description of the YouTube video as well. So check out either one of those and have a play with that. So uh, James, I'm curious also to know a bit more about your background. I know this is a very creative project and um, I just want to know a bit more about your experience with machine learning and even maybe TensorFlow.js prior to this project. Are you new to this area? Do you have experience in machine learning, that kind of stuff? Um, I'm very new to the area. Um, my background is in uh, a bunch of different things. I often say I'm a jack of several trades and king of nothing. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, with respect to machine learning, I looked at some face detection APIs. I played with Runway, which I'm sure you're aware of. Yes, that's I've cool. Class in uh, machine learning based uh, image generation. But uh, yeah, with with PoseNet TensorFlow, it's um, the, the 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 distance between getting an idea and being able to implement a quick sketch uh, is very short, and I appreciate that very much as a, as a beginner in this area. And I guess to wrap up here, like, do you have any future projects planned uh, that might build upon this idea or something new in mind you see this evolving into later on? Yes, with this project, I want to uh, try uh, different forms of visualizations. I'm also very excited about the uh, hand pose, which came out a little later um, with MediaPipe and being able to uh, get hand pose estimation and putting that yeah. in AR so that you can manipulate or interact with objects in AR just with a, yes. a single yes. RGB camera. Um, that's something I'm excited about as well. Yeah, that'd be super cool. I, I'm very excited for that. In fact, we've got some other people today showing off some hand pose kind of stuff too. So maybe there could be some merging of technologies going on there. That's awesome. Um, well, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been great to hear about your projects and we look forward to seeing the final polished version for everyone to try in the future. Thanks for coming today. Thank you for having me. Wow, my mind is blown. Thank you, James, for sharing this beautiful piece with us. One of the strengths, of course, of JavaScript is that it's very robust for visualization, 3D graphics, and much more, as it was designed from day one to basically assist in the display and sharing of content. And as a community, we tend to get loads of really visually awesome demos like this, which are always fun to try. Now, if you've got any final questions, do remember to uh, put them in the chat for James so he can answer those for you right now. And of course, for any of the presenters today, they're still in the live chat. And with that, thank you everyone and to our amazing presenters for attending today. I believe we peaked at over 200 live viewers. So congratulations, we beat our high score by a big amount. And uh, I'm sure there's many more unique viewers as well. So thank you everyone for attending. And now finally, a reminder that all links to the demos will be in the description after the show. So do hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the show to make us do more in the future. Uh, also, this recording will be live on the very same URL that you're on right now. So feel free to share the link with your friends who couldn't make it today so they don't miss out on these really inspiring demos. And of course, use that hashtag made with TFJS if you want to be featured at future show and tells. Now, of course, it's time for our Hangout in the Google Hangout. This is not recorded, but we encourage folks to join who may have extra questions or if you want to mingle with the presenters or just other community members. I'll post the link in the chat right now. One second, let's do that. So there's the link in the chat. Feel free to go to that link and I'm gonna join it right now as well. One moment, let me join myself. <laughs> so then I can allow you all in. And I'll see you over there in just a few minutes. Now, thank you once again for watching today. Do leave your feedback in the comments and of course, uh, we will be notified when we go live if you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.